get to have your press, rock chucker, solid press. And again, just real quick, I'm going to try to just explain some of these things because I would like you to save money. This is not an inexpensive hobby. You need money, okay? And with that, you're going to enjoy it. You can do so many things. The uh, options are limitless. Um, so I'm going to just give you a couple ideas on the things that I use so you don't have to use this thing, this thing, and this thing to find out which one is the best one. I tried it. I'm going to tell you right now my opinion on what is the best um, to get that less than five second standard deviation, five feet per second standard deviation. Anyways, okay, so uh, you ever press? This rock chucker is solid. Um, I don't see myself ever needing any other single stage press. Um, this is for precision rifle loads. Um, this is a 7 millimeter, the 180 grain burger. I also do a 300 uh, Weatherby and my 223. Um, I also do a 6.5 Grendel and you know some other pistol rounds and stuff like that. I'm getting into the uh, 264 Win Mag also. Um, like I said, it's not inexpensive. Each round that you do, um, you buy a new gun, you're going to buy new dies, you're going to buy new this and that and the other. I mean, you're, next thing you know, you're 500 bucks in. Um, so, anyways, just get these things, and you will not have to get any of them again for a long, long time. So, um... Rock Trucker, okay, so with you when you just say we're we're choosing the seven millimeter, um, this is on you know one cartridge. You gotta have your full set of dies, okay, your full length resizing die, and what is super important after that, after you fire form, is to get the collet si the collet sizing die, the neck sizer. This is where you're gonna get a lot of precision. Um, it squeezes the neck versus using the using the ram to size it and then as you're pulling down most other neck sizers pull and will tug on the inside of that neck and stretch it it'll throw off your concentricity um, speaking of that I have a concentricity gauge where I can check my um, my um, neck thickness bullet concentricity all that stuff I bought it, I used it a couple times, you don't really need it. 100 bucks, don't really need it if you roll with a competition seating die. This seats the bullet off of the ogive where the tip of the bullet goes up through and it grabs the ogive and seats the bullet down perfectly straight. If you use a normal seating die, it pushes off the top. Okay, that is going to throw you off your concentricity and you're going to have a little bit of bullet run out. This eliminates almost all the run out. Awesome. Forster, I go with Forster over Redding because it is about not quite half the price, but it's a lot cheaper. 72 bucks versus 140 bucks for the Redding. Okay. Um, another thing that you will need is a good set of calipers. Okay, I had the Frankfurt Arsenal one. This makes the Frankfurt Arsenal one look like a Fisher Price. It's the or Origin Cal. I think it's a eye gauging. I got it on Amazon. I think it's incredible. It, it goes down to a, a freaking half a thousandth, which is more than what you need. Um, very, very accurate. I can use my gauging tool because when we measure, we're going off the ogive, not off the tip, because that is the part that is going to initiate con contact with the lands. Okay, that is the most important part, is the ogive. And this is what you use to measure that. Okay, next thing I get into is um, when you are resizing, Go with the Imperial. I use the other ones. They suck. This stuff is solid. I bought this a couple years ago, and this is as far as I am. 
it's going to last probably 10 years. And I shoot quite a bit. And this is uh, the dry neck lube for the inside of the necks. Alright, so next thing that is going to be super, pop, uh, super important with getting precision and accuracy and very low standard deviation in feet per second is neck turning. I didn't do this for a couple years. Neck turning is very important. I used to do, you know, use my collet neck sizer. I was doing uh, my competition seating die. I got the most difference in my feet per second after I neck turn. Very important. Here's the RCBS neck, turn, neck turner. It's like a hundred bucks. It comes with a different, you have to buy the uh, little mandrels for the inside. Um, they come in all the different, you know, calibers and everything, but that that's the one part that you're going to have to buy, you know, for whatever uh, cartridge you're reloading. Okay, another thing you're going to get is you have your, prim your uh, primer seeder. Oh, what's that? Oh, no primer. Okay, anyways, if you get the Rock Trekker set, this comes with it, that comes with it. It's awesome. You got your seeder, you got your tray. Um, it comes with a very crappy funnel you can throw it in the trash. I kept it just in case one day. Just buy the Redding. Buy the Redding funnel. It's like six bucks. It fits on every piece of brass very smoothly. You don't get any spills. Okay. Another thing you're going to need is a bullet puller. Okay. Let's sit it in there and you smack it on the table the way the bullet pulls it out you're gonna mess up you're gonna second guess yourself on whatever charge you put in there have one of these on hand don't go shoot it okay sometimes you're gonna seat the bullet a little too low you're gonna have to pull it and start all over They're about 20 bucks okay um, getting into powder uh, dropping powder charges this right here I use this, it came with the, um, you know, came with my rock chucker set, it's good. You can get this and then you can use a trickler and have this out, here's my trickler. I did this for a couple years where I'd throw it with the powder thrower. I would put it on my little scale and then trickle and they rest. Um, since then, I decided just to uh, go with the Lyman Gen 6. It puts every powder charge within a tenth of a grain. And either I use this to scoop out another couple little grains, granules, or if it goes over, I just use this to scoop out a couple and dump them back in. Very simple, very fast. I uh, love it. Okay, uh, going back into... Um, brass preparation um, like I said neck turning is super important but before you get into the neck turning and all that other good stuff um, having a case prep station is key um, one of the most important things you got to do is the size of your cases my that I bought some of these um, gun works haven't used it in a long time these gun works um, Velcro Gunworks trimmers. Those are cool if you're doing mass amounts of trimming. Uh, good for the 223. Uh, you want to use these only if you do a full length resize because it uh, sight trims off the shoulder. Um, if you're getting into precision rifle reloads, get grab the Lee. The Lee trimmer. This thing is like five bucks. These pieces for the uh, for the different uh, size calibers, maybe four or five bucks a piece. Um, it is super accurate because it gives you the same consistent measurement on every single piece of brass. Um, and then the awesome thing is, is once you fire form your brass, and then all you do is neck size your brass with your collet neck sizer. I've have you know three or four firings out of a piece of brass and didn't have to trim it again because it's already stretched to the chamber dimensions. 
Um, so anyways, grab this trimmer. You don't need to get one of those ones with the drills and this and that or these guys that are like 75 bucks a piece. Um, grab the lead trimmer. It's very simple. You put your piece of brass in one of these little drills. Comes with the drill bit on there. And basically you just put it on there and go to town. It'll, once it stops grabbing, it's done. But the, it's con it's consistent every single time. And that is the most important part. You want every single piece of brass to be consistent. The same length. You want the primer pockets to be the same. You want your flash holes deburred. And so that's when we'll get into this uh, case prep station. You throw it on. I have my flash hole deburring, chain for deburr, and clean your primer pockets. Okay, the, the Lyman primer pocket cleaners that came with this were not that great. Buy the Hornady primer pocket cleaner. Okay, it's got a good grip on it. It, it cleans the primer pockets incredibly. Um, then you have your primer pocket uniforming, uh, where basically it cuts out every little bit that you need cut out to make them all uniform. Um, I don't know if I forgot anything. Oh, one more thing that you could get into uh, after you shoot your brass four or five times is um, using a uh, map gas to do annealing. Okay, pretty simple. Just turn on the gas, grab your little drill, you throw the case in it, get it going. You hit it for about four or five seconds once you see the color turn. There's a lot of other videos that show you how to anneal. I'm not going to go into how to do all these things. I just want to give a quick overview on what the things that I do to each piece of brass. And uh, a lot of this stuff, you do it once, you're done. Uh, from there on, you just resize, clean the primer pockets, and check your measurements on your trim. Um, you hit that, and then you're good for another four or five firings. Okay, if I forgot anything, I will post a follow-up video. But, um, oh, okay. Well, another thing is, have at least two or three uh, reloading manuals handy. I have like four. This comes with your rock chucker set. Okay, you got your barns. Um, they're good to have. They're good to double check, cross check, cross reference. Um, you always got the internet, then you got a lot more measurements than those guys. Uh, they help a lot. I find myself, every time I sit down to reload, I have to go back and read something. I have to read a case dimension or trim to length, and uh, it just happens. You're never going to remember everything. Always look it up again. It doesn't hurt. Um, for some of the more pop the stuff that I was doing, I kind of made my own little thing put together all the different powders that I had, bullets I was using, cartridges that I was shooting. Um, once I started getting too heavy into it, I just kind of gave up on that because I was just spent a lot of paper. I can find all that stuff online. Um, use good brass. Um, use Lapua, Norma, Nosler, uh, Remington. Um, I have just came into some Winchester brass that was $15 for 50 and you know they, I don't know they're shot a couple times but I'm gonna just go through all these steps and I'm gonna see how perfect I can make it um, just to see so questions comments anything I forgot go ahead and shoot me a question I'll answer it um, like I said, I'm not a professional. I've been doing it for a few years, but I'm getting really damn good results. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, all right. Have a good one.